Hi, so today I'm going to be trying a different type of video altogether. So I've been doing these philosophy videos as videos where I talk into the camera and that got old, so I did the live streams, and today I'm simply going to try talking into a microphone because I find for certain topics that trying to talk and pretend that I'm looking at a person when I'm actually looking at a camera is fairly counterproductive. Today I'd like to talk about this idea, this saying that people have and that you're going to hear every now and then depending on where you grow up or who you grow up around, this saying, you think you're better than me? You think, what, you, he forgot where he came from. You think you're better than me? I want to talk about what causes people to say this, what I think causes people to say this, uh, the mentality required to say these types of things, how it drags people down, how it's such a cancer on society, and above all, how you can, uh, how, how you can try to lift yourself out of this mindset. So, I believe that people who will look at you and say, go, you think you're better than me, are part of what I, what many people call the, the victim mentality or victim culture. The whole idea is that you identify as a victim. You believe that all the bad things that are happening to you in your life are, are, are out of your control, that, it, that, that the rest of the world has predestined you to be unhappy has predestined you to be a failure, whether it's the man, your boss, your parents, your teachers, or just, you know, whatever, or you know, your ex-wife, your ex-girlfriend, people who are more powerful than you have decided that you are not going to succeed, and it doesn't matter how much you try that you are not going to be able to succeed. And people who think that will often look at others and say, you think you're better than me? And this is a really, really counterproductive and a really, really bad thing. Now, there are two reasons I believe that the victim mentality or the victim culture, the victim mindset, the victim identity is so popular in modern day. The first reason I think that it's very, very popular is that People are always looking for a reason. They're always looking for somebody else to blame. They're always looking to move responsibility away. And I always had the idea that this was the case, but it wasn't really until I started doing YouTube more and more often that I realized to the extent to which even regular people simply like to offload responsibility for decisions or outcomes onto other individuals. Every now and then I would get these messages in my YouTube inbox or Reddit inbox or my company email. And I'm at a point right now in my company email, not making this up, I actually have more people messaging me about their life and my contact form on my website than I do people who want to get something fixed. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things where I look back on, uh, on my goals and what I was doing. And if I had any idea that more than 200 people would watch these videos, I probably would have kept it all anonymous. But that's, that's not something that I can really think about at this point because it's, it's you know, what's, what's done is done. But I'll get these messages and somebody will say, I have a job that I don't really like and my boss doesn't really appreciate me and I don't make a lot of money and I don't really see where I can go with it and I just got offered this job by this person that really seems to think in the same wavelength that I do. He seems to really appreciate what I can bring to the company. It pays three times as much. The schedule is much more flexible. Lewis, should I take this job? Should I take this job? And I'll just think to myself, why is this person messaging me to get the answer to a question that I feel is so obvious, a question that I feel answers itself? And the reason I feel I've gotten this question and the reason I think my cat who just meowed thinks I get, I'm getting these questions is because that individual needs my approval. And it's not just because they look up to me. I, I'm not, I don't have that type of ego where I think I'm somebody that's particularly worth looking up to in any way, shape, or form. I don't, I don't promote uh, aggrandizement here. I don't want people you know, putting me on a pedestal of any kind. It's nothing like that. What I think it is, and the reason I think I get so many of these questions, is people want to be able to offload the blame. If if uh, I say, yes, quit your current job that you used to provide for your family and take this opportunity, if that opportunity then fails, it's not that, that they made the wrong choice. It's that I could have, I, you know, I had a good thing going, but this person told me to make this decision, and now it's Lewis's fault. And I'll get a lot of these questions where it's just, I really don't understand why you even have to ask. You already know the answer to the question. You know the answer to the question, but you're asking the question anyway. And it's one of those things where I really feel like a lot of people, they need to offload the responsibility for the decision if it goes haywire 
onto somebody else. Not even so that they can go to that person and say, Lewis, I want in- you know, I want the income that I lost from this. It's not for that, but for their own mental well-being. I feel that a lot of people need to offload the um, the, the liab, I guess the mental or the emotional liability for making the wrong decision onto somebody else. And what the victim mentality does is the victim mentality allows us to blame somebody else for our personal failure. And that makes it very, very popular because it takes responsibility away from us, the individual, for our failings in our own life to do what we want. It stops us from being, it allows us to not feel bad about it. Because if, if we admit that we are in control of our life, that we're in control of our destiny, that we're in control of achieving our own happiness, and we fail then we are failures. But if, if there is no control over it, if other people who are more powerful than us predestined us to be failures, then you know what? Hey, I, I'm a great person. I tried. I do good things. I just couldn't succeed. We can, we can offload that onto others. The second reason I think that this is so popular is because the individuals who, who say these things, who say things like, you think you're better than me, are actually pulling others down. So the victim mentality starts with the bosses. It starts with the teachers. It starts with the parents. It starts with the man. It starts with the establishment. It starts with that idea of, of those who are above us pushing us down. Now, that is one way for the victim mentality to be created. It's created within ourselves and we believe that somebody else is pushing us down. The second way that the victim mentality is created is when people who are beneath us say stuff like, you think you're better than me? And then the people who are beneath us start pulling us down. So in our head, we already have this idea that the establishment is pushing us down. And then we allow individuals who are already experts, who are already seniors into the victim mentality to start uh, pushing us down even further. And, and and pulling us down by, so it's, it starts from this thing where it's kind of like um, from top down and then it starts to be this thing that occurs I think like bottom up like from the you know the individuals who are already stuck in the victim mentality are now kind of pulling us down and and that is kind of and that's pretty pretty dangerous and and the reason that we will often fall into this trap of the victim mentality is because the the individual who is saying you think you're better than me is usually it's not somebody who's different from us now i believe that that this is so effective when these these senior victims start uh then making victims of 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 regular people the reason it's so effective is it's it's not because this advice you think you're better than me no you're just like us this that and the other you know i try to do what you did and it didn't work. You think you're better than me? I think that the reason it's so effective is because it's coming from individuals who, who have started where we started. It's not that people much better or much beneath us are, are saying these things. It's, it's when you went to the same school and you had the same classes with the same teachers and the same grades and that person is looking at you saying, you think you're better than me? It's when you both worked at the same office and you had the same job and the same boss and that coworker saying, you think you're better than me? It's It's when you both worked on the same construction site, building the same building, doing the same thing, and that person says, you think you're better than me? We often identify with our peers. Our peers are, you know, similar age, similar job, similar position. So when somebody who's on our same position says that, we may give it more credit or more credence than when somebody who is outside of our sphere of influence gives us advice. So it's easy for us to identify with the advice that's given to us by people who are our peers. So when you combine that with the fact that I believe that many people simply enjoy offloading liability or responsibility for decision-making and happiness in their own life onto, uh, you know, making that somebody else's fault, I think it's fairly easy for, for people to fall into this victim mentality. The biggest problem with this mentality is that once you become a, a, an advanced stage victim where it takes over your life is that all of these other individuals become your, your adversary. So let's say that I'm a victim. I believe that because of the way I grew up and that I didn't start with money and that I didn't get the best education and, you know, my mother told me, Lewis, you're going to grow up to be a failure, just like your father, this, that, and the other. Just, if, if I believed that I was a victim because of that, that then, okay, I guess the reason I couldn't accomplish anything, the reason I still work at Modell's Sporting Goods, putting price tags on basketballs as a 27-year-old man is because I, well, you know, it's because of how I grew up. 
right? Now, let's say that I have a friend that grew up and went to the same schools. He had parents that were even meaner than mine, and he started out with no money. And let's say that friend built a successful business for themselves. They became financially independent. They became happy, and they they went, went on to live a great life. Even though that person was my friend, even though that individual was somebody that I relate to, that I grew up with, that person is now my enemy. That person would become my enemy because what he does is he takes my, my, my victimhood, he takes the world that I've built for myself, and he is walking proof that I am full of shit. If somebody could start with the exact same circumstances that I had, if that person could have the same circumstances, the same parents, the same lack of money, the same education, everything being the same, grew up the same way, but his life turned out happy and he did everything he wanted with his life and I didn't. Now I'm put in this awkward situation where I have to explain to him why I am where I am and I have to explain it to him in a manner where he's not going to look at me and say, bullshit. And the problem is that I'm not going to be able to do that because he knows that we grew up in the same situation. He knows we grew up with the same, with the same, um, with the same ailments. He knows that we grew up with the same disadvantages. He knows that we grew up with the same issues. So he's going to look back at me knowing that we grew up with the same disadvantages, the same issues, the same crap facing both of us. And he's going to say, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You may think that the world hates you and that's why you are where you are, but you're on some bullshit because I started exactly where you started and 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 I've achieved this for myself and you didn't. So explain. And I'm not gonna have anything to say. So what the victim then has to do is they have to disassociate themselves with anybody who is like them, or the victim then has to uh, bring down other people. And this is one of the things about being around uh, negative people, about being around people who are who have these types of issues, is that they will always uh, they will always try to bring you down to their level. You ever hear the saying that miserable people will bring you down to their level and beat you with experience? The reason that people do this is ego. Let's say that I spent the last 10 years of my life not pursuing my dreams, not doing what makes me happy, not pursuing a better job, none of that. Let's say I spent the last 10 years doing absolute jack shit because I was stuck in my victim mentality. And I thought to myself, well, it's not my fault. It's that the world is set up this way. So it's just okay that I haven't achieved what I wanted to achieve. And now my friend comes to me and explains to me exactly how, well, you don't... You had the exact same issues that I did. You had the exact same uh, life path as I did, but look at how mine turned out so much better. Now I have to admit to myself that I was wrong. I would have to admit to myself that for that past 10 years that I could have been achieving everything I wanted to achieve. I could have met the people I wanted to met. I could have accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I could have become financially independent and I could have become happy, but I didn't because I was wrong That's hard to swallow. It's hard to swallow because that would mean that for the last 10 years of my life, uh, not only was I wrong, but I now have to cut my losses. I have to admit that the last 10 years of my life was nothing but a miserable learning experience that I just need to trash and throw away because right in front of me were all my dreams. And I have to admit and... and, uh, and, um, chew on the fact and swallow the fact that everything that I wanted, I could have achieved over the past 10 years, and I didn't because it was my choice to pursue this victimhood bullshit. And the problem is that most people have an ego that's too large for them to grasp the fact that they wasted their life. Most people have an ego that's too large to allow them to cut their losses and admit that they that they that they have created a fantasy land for themselves. So rather than admit that the fantasy land is fantasy, that the idea that uh, that their victimhood is something that they cannot step back from, well, uh, that, 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 that is, you know, they were born to be a victim. Rather than step back from the fantasy, they double down on that fantasy and then seek to make the fantasy a reality. So they're going to try to drag down people who, any t- anybody who provides evidence that they're full of shit, anybody that started out with the same circumstances as the victim needs to themselves be taken down a notch in order for the victim to then prove to the world that, see, 
I was right. The world is against us. So anytime a victim sees that somebody started off with the same circumstances or worse circumstances than them, the victim is going to seek to pull that person down, to make that person less successful, to make that person stop pursuing their dreams so that their fantasy world then becomes real. The full-time victim, in order to not have their entire world, the bedrock, the foundation of their philosophy, come falling down on them, causing them a crippling sense of loss and depression, having to come to terms with the fact that they've wasted so many years in their life, what they will do out of ego is bring down anybody who presents evidence that they have wasted their life. So what the professional victim will do, which is a true cancer to society, is find people that started off in the exact same place that they did and seek to pull them down and seek to destroy the idea that they can break out of the, of the prison of their negative circumstances. I've often said that I feel people use the word friend a little too liberally when they should be using the word peer, acquaintance, or coworker, and there's a reason for that. Become more successful in your life and see how happy your friends are for you. Uh, get promoted at your job to the point where you make six times your old salary and see how your friends approach you, see how they act towards you, uh, you know, find happiness in your life, meet the, the, the woman or the man of your dreams and marry them right after you find the job where you make six times the money you did before and tell me how your friends look at you, tell me how they think of you, tell me how they talk to you and if they talk to you differently, if they don't love you for it, are they really your friends? Because you will see the true nature of people when you break out of your victim mentality and you see how they act towards you. You, you tell them of, of uh, the amazing new life that you, uh, that you have and all these amazing new experiences and you think that you're going to have this nice warm embrace, a hug and a welcome. We're so happy for you. We're so proud of you. And instead, you get the whole you think you're better than me? Or, oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's gonna last really long. Where they, just start, where they start to pick at you and they pick at you and they try to pull you down because they are a member of the victim mentality. They need to pull you down in order to not shatter their vision of how their world works. The problem with the victim mentality is that the longer you've spent within the victim mentality, the harder it is to get outside the victim mentality. So if you, and, and I'm not going to say that we've never fallen into this trap. A lot of us have fallen into this trap, and it's actually natural to fall into this trap for short periods of time. When you get fired unfairly, when somebody that you love just leaves you for somebody else and, that, and, and you, you had no idea how long that it was happening, when some horrible death occurs within your family, it's natural for a few days for us to be angry, for us to become depressed, and for us to think that the world is against us. For that to occur for a day or two days or three days or even a week, every now and then, when circumstances really get us down is natural. It's some, but it's something that we can recover from. We wasted two or three or four days or a week in this sad little pity party, but once it's done, we come back to reality. It's when you start to spend a month or three months or a year or two years in this mentality that it becomes much more difficult to go back. Going down the path of victimhood is kind of like having a fork in the road and choosing to go down the victimhood path rather than the life path. Because when you go down that path, you, you have to, you have to, it's not something that you just snap out of. You kind of have to start walking all the way back. You have to run back through the victimhood path to go back to where you went in the fork in the road to start, to decide to start living your life again. So the further you've walked down the path of, of being convinced into this bullshit that is your own victimhood, the further you've walked down that path, the less likely it is that other individuals are going to be able to snap you out of it. And that is what is, and that's the hardest part of this entire mentality of the whole you think you're better than me movement, the whole you think you're better than me culture, is that the longer somebody's been like that, the more difficult it will be for anybody to snap them out of it. And most people think, oh, you know, you grew up like him, you'll understand, you'll be able to help him out. The hardest part of it is that that doesn't hold true. Because the very individuals that are the closest peers to the victim are the victim's greatest enemy. Because as I stated, who better to point out the victim's bullshit than their peers? See, again, somebody who is rich, 
Oh, who cares? Of course you're able to succeed. You started with money. Somebody who's good looking and handsome, well, of course you're able to succeed. Look at how you look. Of course you're going to get all the good jobs. Somebody with a 190 IQ, of course you're going to be able to succeed. It was easy for you to coast through school. But then when you have somebody who sucked at school, who has started out with no money, who had a family that said they're never going to accomplish anything, who had a shitty childhood, you take that person and you throw them out into a bunch of miserable circumstances and they become greatly successful and they become happy with themselves? Well, gee. It's the victim kind of falls out of they they just ran out of excuses when they meet that person. They ran out of excuses when they met that peer. So usually when you go to support groups, when you go to when you go to support groups or you, or you go to your friends for help, often it is the support group or it is your, your your circle of peers, your friends that are the the most qualified and the most able to snap you out of a lot of the bullshit that you get yourself into. The problem with the victim mentality is that the very people who are closest to you become your greatest enemy. Now, I know for myself, it would have been very, very easy to fall into this mindset of victimhood. I remember the way that I grew up. Um, when, I, when I was young, there was just constant screaming all the time. I grew up with uh, mentally ill people. And I, I still remember my mother, like almost every other day, Yuck, oh, I can't wait till you're gone. You're going to grow up to be a loser, just like your father, blah, 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 every single day. Um, you know, no, no support for the things that I was interested in, just constant screaming, three in the morning, six in the morning, Morning, nine at night. What it, it was, it was at all times of the day, all sorts of lovely stuff. We didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up, and I remember being, you know, just not really the best in shape. So it was easy to, it was easy for me to get made fun of by other people. I still remember being something like 103 pounds as a senior in high school. When you, when you go into a high school, people like to pick on one another. Again, it, it's it's not it's not great when you're about you know 20 to 60 pounds lighter than everybody in your class for, you know, a good half of your life. And it, and it would have been really easy for me to fall into that mentality. And sometime around the age of 16 or 17, I just, I just snapped out of it. I, I don't know what it was, but I just stopped believing that the world was out to get me. And I opened myself to the idea that I'm in control of my own life. And there are endless possibilities out there. And I'm only living, and even though my world right now is really small, that Within this small world, I'm seeing maybe like nine out of ten of the things that are in my world are bad, but there are millions of things in the world. And because I'm a teenager, I'm only seeing ten of them. And that once I enter the world, that this is all going to be different. I kept that mentality in my head rather than believing in this whole, I grew up like this, and I didn't have money, and people yelled, and I didn't do well in school, and people, eh, man, so I, yeah, I'm just going to put price tags on, on uh and you know, I'm gonna put price tags on basketballs at motels until I'm until I'm dead and live in a basement. I instead of doing that, I decided to just 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 believe in the idea that I had choice over my own life. And I didn't. And and a, a key part of it for me, and a key thing that I think is good to getting out of the victim mentality, is is jumping into things and not caring how silly other people think they are, because we are our own worst critics. We again, the the victimhood mentality. It it ninety nine percent of it again. It starts in our head. It's not always the people who say you think you're better than me. They help drag us into the victim mentality. But they very a lot of the individuals who say that type of stuff they got sucked in because of what was in their own head. So we are often our own worst critics and. It has to end at some point when it's not constructive criticism. So I wanted to get an internship at, um, at, at a recording studio, and I got an internship at this one small place. And it didn't pay, and it was silly, and it was a dumpy-looking, crappy-ass place, but it was something. I told myself every day, I did something. And then I wanted to get an intern. I wanted to work at Avatar Studios. Avatar Studios was was is probably one of the best recording studios in the world. You just look up Avatar Studio A. You look up just and not not even the equipment because the equipment is amazing, but just the, the the sound of Studio A. When you walk into Studio A and you play an instrument, or you just walk in, you hear what it sounds like. You understand why this is one of the most revered sounding recording rooms in the world. It's ab. It's 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 fucking amazing. It's like it's 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 just it, it's it's acoustic porn. The way that this, like the the way that it, like no parallels, anything. It's just it's, just, it's it's absolutely beautiful. You have to walk into the room to understand it. But I said I wanted to work there, and I was 17 or 18 years old. And I remember that the youngest people there. There was like one guy who was 24. Everybody else was 26, 27. The techs were 30 to 60, and the management staff was 40 to 50. Right. 
Now, everybody else would call the 26 to 27 year olds the kids because they were the young people. You wouldn't really take them as seriously as you would the older, uh, the older people. And they're, they're 26, 27. I'm 17, 18. And a lot of people thought it's ridiculous that you try to get a job here, that you try to get an internship here, that you try to be taken seriously when you have a high school level education and you're coming to that level of place. So I, and I remember getting my, I, I, I didn't care. I, I did not believe, well, I guess that, you know, oh, if only I was older. Oh, if only I had this education. Oh, me! Instead of believing any of that, I decided to say, you know what? Eh, I'm 17. What the hell? I, remember, I showed up there like five or six times. And I remember one time I had my... Um, I was going there. I had this uh, this Seamoy headphone amp that I had put together in my pocket. It was an Altoid Seamoy headphone amp. If you, if you Google it, you'll find a lot of information on that thing. I don't know how popular they are, how available they are now, but I know in the early 2000s, these were the, the these were the rage of de- of do-it-yourself projects. I mean, we, we had less impressive stuff than Arduino back then, but still, it was, it was a cool little project that you could put together. This is beautiful little nine volt powered headphone amp, a uh, nine volt battery powered headphone amp that you could even power our small speakers off. It's a pretty cool little thing. And I had this fall out of my pocket and I remember somebody saw it and like, wow, you put that together. And I, I, have, I just saw the, the, like the twinkle in that, in that person's eye. And I felt like that was like, if there's a reason that I got hired over the other 50,000 people that probably apply there every day, well, not 50,000, but you know, I'm exaggerating, but a lot of people apply there every day. If there's a reason that I got picked it, it, that, it could have been something as silly as that, but it was because I made the effort to show up that I got that. And then I got the internship. And I remember the first, the first or second day I was there was Avatar's 30th anniversary party. And on the Avatar's 30th anniversary party, they had so many different musicians show up, so many different people, and they were puking on the roof. They were puking in the, in the stairwells, and I was just, I was smiling. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I was cleaning the puke off of everything. I was cleaning the bathrooms. I was cleaning the phones off with alcohol or 409 so that you didn't have, when you picked it up, you didn't have, you know, the fingerprints or the ear or the ear sweat of the last person on it. I was cleaning the knobs of the consoles. I was clean. I, you know, I, w- I would work on. E- I was always doing something. Whether I was vacuuming floors, cleaning the, you know, the, you know, cleaning the couches, making sure that every single artist there had whatever they wanted at any given time. If they wanted food, I run out. I did every single thing that you should do. And after a few months, I was asked by somebody in the tech room if I could help them with because they had a bunch of these Fostex headphones that they needed to have work for a session the next day. And I got that as an opportunity. And, and they saw that I, I you know, wasn't the best at soldering at the time, but I could do the job. And the reason they asked me is because they noticed that I was one of the only people that would actually clean the toilets. I was the only person that would clean the puke. I was the only person that would do a lot of this work out of the interns that were there. And I had that opportunity. So rather than live in this victimhood that, oh, I'm only 17, they're never going to take me seriously, I wound up being taken more seriously than a lot of the other people there. And then I wound up getting hired. And and, and that was one of like the crowning achievements. It's so silly thinking about it now at 27. That one of the crowning achievements of my life was getting picked for a job that paid $7.50 an hour after three months of full-time working for free. Not a couple of hours a day, but 40 to 60 hours a week of free labor, cleaning shit. Now my reward is an $7.50 job. And I was so fucking excited. It's the crowning achievement. And I wound up leaving there, and then I wound up starting my own business. And... That's another point when it would be easy to get into the victim mentality. Oh, look at look at the other people who've been doing this. They've been recording, repairing studio gear for like 30 years. And I'm 18 or 19, and I only have this much experience. Oh, no. And I wound up getting a few decent freelance gigs. Not a lot, because this was 2008. This was the year of the Great, the great Recession. This was the year that a lot of people were losing business. And you know, if, if, if you were already on the rocks like a lot of recording studios were in the 2000s, uh, this, this was the, uh, the death knell for you. So a lot of studios went out of business that year. And then I decided to get into this whole refurbishing Apple products thing. That wound up being a little bit of an accident, but I, I fell into doing that as a business. And it would have been really easy to look at these other places and go, yo, but I don't have much money in my pocket. I got $268 left. And these guys have stores. These guys have offices. They have brand names. They have, they have Google Places reviews. They have real websites. I, I have nothing. 
Oh, see, the world is set up against it. I tried. I tried to start a business. I tried to prove that even though I'm 17 and have no money, that I can get ahead. But you can't get ahead in the system. It would have been easy to, to just fall into that. And that's what I feel like a lot of people do. But instead, I said, hey, I have 260. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a website with nothing but a Microsoft Word table. I'm not kidding. I opened up Word or Open Office and I made a table. And there were three model numbers listed. Two services listed for each of the model numbers. And for those two services, like screen and something else, I listed a price. That was it. I had a JPEG on the top of the site that had an email, a phone number, and a picture of a sheep that I'm pretty sure I stole off of Google Images. I wish that I could go back and show you in the Wayback Machine what this looked like, but this website was so crappy. It wasn't archived. The website I made after it was archived, but this piece of fucking crap wasn't. This was such a shit website. It had a green backdrop, like a bright green backdrop. Like this is Yahoo GeoCities circa 1997 level bullshit here. A Microsoft Word table and a phone number. That was it. And just a little description of, of, you know, we will do it in front of you, we will stock the part, and we will show up at your place, and we will answer any questions that you have related to parts, this, that, or the other. That was it. And that stupid little piece of fucking shit website, after a few months of just back page, Kijiji, classified ads, and, uh, and Craigslist, not a lot of Craigslist, but a lot of the other three, that website, that was making me like a few hundred bucks a week. And I was just on top of the world with that a few hundred bucks a week. And then after a few months, it was making me a thousand bucks a week. That piece of fucking crap website doing these basic little services making me a few thousand bucks. Now, I look back and I just think to myself, wow, imagine if I had entered the victim mentality when that happened. Imagine. Now, we fast forward a couple of years later, we fast forward a couple of years later, and I started a supply company with somebody else. And I remember sometime around Thanksgiving of 2011. This was probably like, Thanksgiving 2011 was probably one of the worst days of my life. At the very least, when I just think about how I felt and how, I, how crippled I felt, how paralyzed I felt towards what was going on in the future. So my website had been redone by this company. They, they, all I wanted them to do was change the theme and upgrade the version, of, I mean, update the version of Magento from like 1.4 to 1.5 or 1.4 to 1.6, something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers. And I remember that I had uh, my website redone and they they changed it when they updated it and i know that this is something that doesn't usually occur because i've done this I, i've done this every single time since myself when i install when I, I do my own magento install and i do my own fucking magento update because i don't trust people at this point point. and what it did is it changed it the settings from authorize and capture to just authorize now for those of you who are not that into e-commerce when you charge a, when you book a hotel over the phone they may authorize your credit card to make sure the money's on it, but they don't capture the money. So they make sure it's available, but they don't actually physically take it and put it in their bank account until they capture it, until you show up at the hotel. So they authorize it to make sure other people can't get that money from your credit card, but they don't capture it and take it. So my so usually when you're doing e-commerce and you're selling something, you just you want to authorize and capture. You want to take the money at the time of the sale so that you get it and then you ship the product. Now my website was set up for authorize and capture. What they did is they changed my website, this terrible company, Vericom Technologies, they changed it to authorize. And this is not a setting you check every day. Again, I, I don't know how many business owners I have out there listening to this. If you have an e-commerce website, you're probably not going to Magento, Configure, Admin, and checking your payment settings to see every single day that you're set to authorize and capture rather than authorize. It's just, it's not the way most business owners spend their time. So it, when it's set to authorize, the money will show up in your PayPal account. You will, physic, you, will, you will see the money is there. But something like, I forget if it was 7 or 30, I think it was 7 or 30 days later, within 7 or 30 days, that money would be returned to the customer unless it was manually captured. This So most of my sales had been going on via eBay and Amazon at the time. Not a lot through the website, not a lot. A couple of large orders, but not much through the website. So it wasn't something that I really noticed in a large scale. I would log, I would see I got 10 orders in the website. I would log into PayPal. I'd see that the money was there from those 10 orders. I wouldn't think, hey, 
out of the blue for no reason. Let's check and see if I have to capture that. So the money from all those orders wound up getting thrown uh, thrown away. So over the span of September, October, no, and then finally around November, I remember checking and saying, huh, something looks weird here. Uh, I think there should be more money than there, than there is. And somebody had said, hey, I received my money back. I don't know if you're just trying to give me this part for free, but I just thought I'd mention it. And I'm like, huh. And I was handling a lot of the time. I didn't have a lot of employees back then. I was handling two different companies. And I was still in this, in this new phase of my business. I was in my early 20s. I was wearing so many different hats. I was working so many hours a day. This just so happened to fall through the cracks. Now, and I log in and I notice that about $30,000 overall was missing because for three months, my website was not properly taking people's money. Almost three months, two and a half months. And when I added it all up to about $30,000, now right now, $30,000, I would not be happy losing $30,000. I would not be happy losing $30,000, but I would not... Um, but I would not lose my shit over it. It would just be, oh, I lost 30,000 bucks. Eh, I will make it back. Now, but back then, losing $30,000 was, that was a death sentence. That was uh, the world is ending. That was a, this was, this is an opportunity of a lifetime that has failed. And I remember going home with this sinking feeling like this is it. The world is over. My, I had my one chance. I've worked 12 to 16 hours a day for years, and it was pissed away by a fucking web developer choosing the wrong drop-down menu. And I didn't even notice it. I thought that and it, was the, it would have been so easy to fall into that mentality of, I tried, but man, my mother was right. You're going to be a loser financially, quote, unquote, just like your father. And what I started doing that day, I got home around 10 or 11 o'clock. And the well, first thing I did is we, finished, we, we went to get some food for Thanksgiving. And I just celebrated Thanksgiving with, with the, the, the small staff that I had. Because at that point, you already lost it. You might as well enjoy the company of the people you have. It was more. It was. It was very difficult to enjoy. It was like. It was one of those sinking feelings. It was that sinking feeling, like uh, you know that you you know you murdered somebody. You know the cops are on the way to your office. You know they're about to find the gun, and you're just waiting for them to show up in handcuffs to get you. It was that that was the feeling that I had? Except you know, like the financial feeling. You know, like my, my landlord, my the bank, this, that, and the other. But when I got home and. St- I sat down, and for about about 15 minutes, I felt myself falling into that victimhood shit. And then I just said, something happened that just grabbed my keyboard, and I said, no. And I started making a list. I started making an Excel list. It was an Excel file, which included uh, the, the transaction, the part that was purchased, the amount of money, the name of the individual, and, and then I constructed this, 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 a little, this little, little letter. Where it would so the letter would correspond to you know it would it would take the name the part the 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 dollar amount this that and the other and say this is owed because and it would apologize and I must have stayed up until five or six in the fucking morning and not even went to sleep just doing this spreadsheet and over the next one or two days we can I continue going over the spreadsheet so that I can make a little collections thing and man it would have been so easy to fall into that victimhood shit of you know. I, I can't, uh, this is never going to work. I tried, but the, you know, they're keeping me down. No matter what happens, luck, God, the man, whatever the fuck it is, is keeping me down and make it. I, I tried, but this is it. This is it for me. And just, and just going on to live a shit life. But I made that list and I'm not, and I did, we didn't recover 30,000. We recovered, we recovered a good 20,000 of the 30. There was about 10,000 that didn't pay. And by the way, when I say that repair shops are shit for wholesale business and that repair, you know, I I encourage that you deal with regular customers rather than repair shops, most of the consumers paid their bill. It was the piece of crap repair shop owners that just said, eh, I got free parts. I don't have to deal with this. And this is dating back to 2011. So, you know, now I can understand somebody, if some repair shop owner is like, oh, I saw his YouTube video. He said something I didn't like. Screw him. This is 2011, so this is way before any of that stuff. 
So, but I got back 20,000 of it. And the reason, the difference between recovering 20,000 of the 30,000 lost or not recovering anything, failing completely and just closing and going back to putting price tags on basketballs at the age, um, you know, around the age of 20, uh, 23 was not falling into a victim mentality even when it felt like it was over, even when, like, did, and I just think today, like, if I had, if I, if I had continued down the path that I was going down for those 15 minutes where I was just sitting home at midnight, just feeling like the stupidest piece of garbage on earth for having fucked up one opportunity to start a company with somebody who had more money than me and do something great, that, 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 that you know, it, would, it all would have been over. And then I think about the opportunities that I had later on. That company failed for, for many other reasons other than that. But, but getting over that, that stumble, getting over that stumble allowed me to, to find the business that I have now. And also, there were times later on where we were selling parts to these, uh, to these other businesses. There was one business that contacted me that puts, they put, and put screens in a, into these medical devices that get used in hospital. They had, they had stupid amounts of money. Like they were buying stuff for over, which is to, almost totally unheard of in, you know, this crappy little laptop parts business. And if, uh, they were buying screens for two, uh, almost two times their actual cost. And, and, and they were paying by, by check. So we're, we're not dealing with PayPal chargebacks. We're not dealing with customers that say, this doesn't do that, blah, blah, blah. We're dealing with stuff where they are, where you're, you're going to make back your, your entire investment times two. And you don't have to do labor. You don't have to do shit other than order and ship. It was great. And they were having certain issues with certain things, and they were asking certain questions. The, certain, the kind of questions they were asking with the kind of, it was the kind of thing where if you were a 23 or a 24-year-old that didn't have much business experience, you might think to yourself, these guys are going to see right through me. They're not going to want to do business with me. And it would be easy to fall into that victimhood shit. And this is one of the things that I specifically talked about in one of these older videos I did. Uh, don't be afraid of the rooms you walk into as a technician. Never be afraid of the rooms you walk into. I still remember when they were having certain issues with something and they just weren't taking me seriously at all. It would have been real. And a lot of people around me were saying, you should deal with the stuff that's on your level. You shouldn't be trying to deal with these larger high tech companies. You're going to go there and they're just going to, they're not going to take you seriously. They're going to have this, this huge giant clean room and all these engineers and, they're, and you're not going to know shit. I had a lot of people telling me that I shouldn't be bothering with that level of business. And I remember visiting and I remember because the, the, the company was actually located near where my in Wisconsin around the area that my dad moved to so I figured I'm, I'm going to visit my dad I might as well visit this company and see why they're having so many problems with a product so I visited and uh, they, they said oh they showed me their facility I tried to dress nicely when I went there I said hey you know I, I, not too nice but Nice, but what's comfortable for me? Because a lot of people are going to wear clothing that's not particularly comfortable for them, and then they're going to and then they're going to act funny, and then they're going to show that they're inexperienced dressing professionally, and that they're inex and that they don't they feel out of their element. When in reality, it's just they don't they're not used to wearing a you know fucking tie. So I, I dressed up in something that felt comfortable for me, professional, and I visit them and I talk to them, and I never act like. Um, I don't act like I'm applying for a job with them. I don't act like I'm applying for their business. I act like I'm a guest and I'm kind of observing or judging them rather than the other way around. And I visit and I say, hi, and we get along and they introduce me to all, their, all the people there. And then they show me the problem they're having with the product and they go, see this, this over here is the problem. This is a mark. And I said, no, that's a piece of dust. And they said, well, no, we're inside of a clean room right now, so that is not a piece of dust. And then I picked up my finger, and I grabbed it, and I, I think I, I had just, like, I, I wiped it, and I said, no, as you can see, that is a piece of dust. Because even if we're in a clean room environment, even if we're in a clean room environment, you I took that screen out of the box, which was not a fucking clean room environment. That shit's been through DHL or FedEx or whatever packaging plant in China it was in. And then you took that dusty piece of garbage screen protector, which is fucking caked with dust. And then you took it off. And as you were taking it off, that dust, some of the most of that dust got sucked out, but quite a bit of it landed right in the screen. And then we're avoiding the fact that the other person who is not, who is outside is not in a clean room and he's doing the same thing. So I walk over and I'm like, okay, 
what is this? What is this? What is this? And I go, that is also a piece of dust. And I wasn't a wise ass about it. I wasn't using the same vocal intonation that I'm using for a YouTube talk show. But I said, that is a piece of dust. And I just wiped it off. And they're like, oh. And I think to myself, imagine if I had let the victim mentality take over me at that point. Imagine if I had said, yeah, you know, the big companies, they're just never going to allow a little guy like me to make money. They're never going to take me seriously. Would I have flown across the country and spent money to, to visit them? Would I have showed up and, and stood face to face with these engineers and these PhDs and these master's degrees and these um, people with far more qualification than me? Would I have ever thought to show up and would I have ever imagined a world where all of these people cannot tell the difference between a defective part and a fucking piece of dust? Probably not. And that, that was a deal that during a time that my company was having financial troubles allowed me to make ten to $15,000 for doing really not, no, no real work over just sourcing parts that I had already known how to source, source from, from my other business. So, and, and that's, that's really one of those things that, that, that I think about. And then, and then we fast forward uh, past that when I was having issues with the, um, with the, um, with uh, the board, the the board repair thing, and and I was having issues with the vendor I was using for for doing for doing board repairs for customers, and I, you know it would be easy to say, oh well, look at the you know I can't hire people to do this locally because like look at the economy, look at inflation. How am I supposed to compete with China? They they devalue. You know, let's go into it and not to be like not not to quote Trump here since it's so close to the election, but they devalue their currency. It's impossible to compete in America. Nobody's going to be able to do this level of work. It's so easy to just send it to China. It's it's not something that I'm going to be able to practically do here. You know, th this work is you're supposed to make money off this if you were able to get a good education and I couldn't get a good education because I didn't do well in school and I couldn't pay attention and blah 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 I could fall into that or I could think to myself I could think to myself you know people came up with this so if people came up with this then I have to be able to figure it out and I can do better than them and so so what I did is every single day I tried to learn something new so Every single, and this, this is something that went back to even at Avatar Studios. One of the things that, that helped me out of the victim mentality with, with, uh, with these things was considering each day a success if today I did something I couldn't do yesterday. And again, not to aggrandize Trump, because there are a lot of things about Donald Trump that are, that are really bad, really, really narcissistic, and really just twisted. But one of, the, one of the good points I would say about Donald Trump is that he tells himself a lie. He then believes the lie to be true, and then he lives the lie. I'm not saying living a lie is always true, but when it's a positive lie towards yourself, it's kind of, it, it doesn't, it's not always a bad thing. So, and he just hear me out here. So I remember when I was at Avatar Studios, when I, when I soldered a jack onto a set of Fostex headphones, I thought to myself, I am awesome. I am the best tech in the world. I soldered a headphone jack. This is fucking amazing. And this is not this is not something I would share because I had enough brain at the time to realize that if I shared with my peers that I think I'm the best tech in the world because I replaced a headphone jack, that they are going to fire me and that they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. But what I did is I told myself, look at what I did. And I, what I did is I gave myself a reason to celebrate. So each time I accomplished something that I did not accomplish yesterday, each time I made progress that over what I had done yesterday, I told myself why this was amazing so that I'd have a reason to celebrate. And it would be a little bit of a lie because I, I'm not the best technician in the world because I could solder a damn headphone plug, I guess not jack, a headphone plug onto a set of old headphones. That doesn't make me the best, it doesn't make me a good tech, but I told myself that. And then, I, mean, I remember the first time I replaced an SMD component, some backlight fuse, I believe, on some old motherboard. I remember, I told myself, man, I'm the best component level repair technician on earth. I replaced a surface mount component. My mentor said, you could not replace surface mount components. Apple said, this is not serviceable. I am such a damn genius. And of course, I did not share this with the world. I have enough good sense to know that the rest of the world will think that I'm absolutely fucking crazy. 
if I thought that I am a and that I am a, the best technician, my wife shall even a good one, because I knew how to replace a fucking 0603 fuse. What? I, I knew that this was ridiculous. But I told myself otherwise. I told myself this, this, little, this little lie that I am so amazing because I did this, and this is great, and look at how much better I am today than I was yesterday so that I would be able to celebrate being better today than I was yesterday. And each day, I would move on and do that. Then today, I did the headphone plug. The next, the next day, I would do a switch on an SSL J9000. I wouldn't even do the whole switch. I would desolder one leg of the switch using the desoldering iron, go to move that little leg, with the, the through-hole leg with the tweezer, and see that it moved rather than being stuck in solder, and go, God damn, I'm the best at desoldering there is. And every single day, I would use that... that uh, I would use that in that uh, how do I how do I put this that that celebration as as um, I would use that celebration of success as fuel as momentum to try something new the next day because when you're comparing yourself with everybody else when you're poor and you're going and you're looking at somebody who has three million dollars it's easy to say I can't get there but if you're if you have a dollar in your pocket and the next day you have two dollars in your pocket and you can celebrate that. Well, then the next day, you may be able to celebrate that you have four. And the next day, you can celebrate that you have eight. And the next day, you can celebrate that you have 16. You can continue down that path. You can continue down your journey because you still have momentum. You still have motivation to move forward. But you lose that when you're looking at what everybody else has. You lose that when you are, um, when you are 103 pounds and you can barely lift the fucking Olympic bar and you're looking at everybody else like a bench 315. You lose that when you have $268 in your pocket and you're looking at Jeff Bezos from Amazon. You lose that when you, when you, it's easy to lose that when you're looking at what other people have accomplished. So what I say, one great way out of the victim mentality is Always celebrate. Tell yourself why what you've done today is worth celebrating. And believe in it. Believe in the idea of celebrating yourself and the accomplishment that you made today that you didn't have yesterday, that you couldn't have done yesterday. Uh, celebrate that and use that as momentum and motivation for the next accomplishment tomorrow. Yesterday you saw her a headphone plug. The next day you saw her a... Um, you, uh, um, the next day you solder a switch. The day after that, you troubleshoot a Neve 2254 compressor. The day after that, you replace an SMD fuse. The day after that, you, you uh, figure out some buck converter circuit. The day after that, you figure out how SM bus communication will cause PP bus G3 hot to be 12.23 volts so that you can tell when an SMC is dead without having to do more than a single fucking measurement. And it's just, it's one of these things where it just continues and it snowballs. Yesterday, I believe that I could, uh, that I, that I could do freelance business, you know, the, this fixing studio gear. The next day you believe you could do freelance business to uh, fixing MacBook gear. The day after that, you believe that you could sell, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of medical equipment every, I mean, of LCDs to a medical equipment company, uh, you know, every couple of weeks and, and make money doing that. The thing is, you, but you don't get to that like this. You don't just snap your fingers and wind up with what everybody else has. It, it, it's, it's a path. And each day you're going to work towards it to be better than you were yesterday. So as long as you're always comparing yourself to who you were yesterday, it's easy to keep that momentum. It's easy to keep that motivation to keep going. And I find that that is the best way out of the victim mentality. Because what it does is each day, rather than working to prove pe other people in the world wrong, rather than working to prove all of your peers wrong, you're working to prove yourself right. And I feel that this is, um, you're still working to prove something, but you're working to prove something positive. And rather than work trying to prove something that you cannot prove, which is that Tomorrow, you can have everything that your friend had. If your friend made $500,000, uh, makes $500,000 a month and has everything he wants in life, if you try to achieve that in a day, there's a good chance you'll fail. If you try to compare yourself to that, you're going to fail. But if you try to compare yourself to who you were yesterday, if you can write one line of code today, if you could write one line of code today and you could write zero yesterday, you have a positive comparison. If you could solder a single... 0402 fuse today and you could only solder 0603 yesterday you now have a fair comparison if you could only um if you could only do deals with regular retail customers yesterday and today you got a business client well, you have something to celebrate. And as long as you have something to celebrate, you're going to be able to work your way out of this victim mentality. But you're not going to be able to make your way out of that victim mentality 
So long as you're phrasing your life in terms of, you think you're better than me? No, you're not. You started where I did. How dare you think that you're better than me? Because the problem with those questions is that they, they, don't go, they don't lead anywhere useful. You think you're better than me? If you answer yes, you're an asshole. If you answer, well, no, I'm not better than you. I guess that means that all my dreams and all the things I want to do are not possible because I don't want to be obnoxious, so, yeah. And, and the, the, just the worst thing in the world, the worst shit on earth, is when people fall, fo uh, fall victim to that, when they fall victim to, I don't want to be a pompous jerk, so I'm going to give up all my dreams, I'm going to give up all my hopes, I'm going to give up all my aspirations, so that I don't seem pompous to a self-proclaimed victim. The victim mentality is something that has to end if we're going to do anything in life, and it, it really starts with you.